Are you in medical school? They don't teach you that at medical school. I am also at medical school. What is up party people? Hey, I'm back with another video. And in this video, we're gonna talk about can I handle med school? And how do you know if you are gonna be able to handle med school? Well, I'm gonna give you three questions to ask yourself that should help you understand if you will be able to handle med school or not. Question number one is what is your current workload? By that, I mean how many hours a day right now are you working as in studying or actually going to work. I think that's pertinent because in med school you do have to study and or work long hours as in eight hours, 10 hours, even 12 hours sometimes. Not everybody, but there's just a lot of stuff to do and you really have to keep yourself going some days and some weeks and even sometimes for months, 10, 12 plus hours a day working on specific tasks. So. The question number one is, what is your workload like right now? Okay, and if that is two hours a day, if it's an hour a day, if it's zero, if it's 10, whatever it is, write that down. Because the second question is, what do you think your workload is going to be in med school? You can ask a lot of people, you can go on to Reddit, you can go check with YouTubers, whatever you wanna do, however you wanna figure that out to compare how many hours a day you think you're gonna have to work for these classes and clinicals and things like that. It is obviously different for different people. Some people breeze through undergrad, no problem. They don't study very much. Other people have a really difficult time or they have to just study more. For me, I had to do a lot more work for the same grade than a lot of my colleagues. And so I often would put a lot more hours into say a specific test, but it did help me down the road. When I first got into med school, it was like, you know, if I had one specific test, I would read the chapter, write things down, go over my notes again, share with other people, do note cards, whatever it was, that helped me get set up for like step one and step two. And so I didn't have to sort of put as many hours into those things. And then later down the line, like in residence, that preparation in the beginning helped me in the end. So what is your expectation that you're going to have to work in med school. So once you have those two numbers, you're gonna subtract how much you think you're gonna to have to work from how much you're working right now, and most likely that's gonna be a positive number. And then divide that by two, and then multiply that by your age. I'm, 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 I'm kidding. If there's a big discrepancy, how are you gonna get there? And I don't want you to think that if there's a large discrepancy right now that you can't get there, but let me tell you that if there is a large discrepancy, you're going to have to take some time to get there because what I found is that people with a large discrepancy in those numbers, if they just jump into med school and they're like, yeah, I'm just gonna go for it. For example, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I, I didn't do so good in undergrad. I'm just gonna go to a Caribbean school or a whatever DO school. I'm gonna get into wherever I can and then I'm gonna do really well and I'm gonna try really hard. That really doesn't work very well. If we look at a lot of other transformations, those things don't happen overnight, as in they don't go from one day working one hour on something to working 24 hours a day on something. They gradually increase. It's kind of a long story, but uh, this is why I'm bringing it up, is because most things in life are like this. Most things are gradual improvements and they are not going from zero to 100 overnight. If you have a large discrepancy, you're going to have to work on that and don't think that you can just go to med school, drop in and be like, okay, I'm all in now, even though I've never done this before, I'm gonna start working 10 hours a day. You're gonna have to increase your workload and hours every so often. So if it's two hours a week, if it's you know three hours a week, if it's four hours a month, whatever it is, you're gonna have to make a schedule to go from the first number to the second number before you go into med school, that is my suggestion. So the third question you need to ask yourself is why do you want to do this? What is going to stick yourself in the seat and not get distracted? That is the big question, but you have to be fairly clear on that. And I like to get something in my head that's an actual sort of image when I'm working on something that takes a lot of effort and energy. Think of things for yourself, but I think that if you have a purpose for other people, it's actually more powerful 
than just having a purpose for yourself. Especially it's more powerful if you're like, I want a cool car. Like that doesn't really last very long and get you very far. But if you have a purpose for say your family, you're like I want to get my grandmother out of you know X house, that will last a really, really long time. That is my three questions to help you out to see if you will be able to make it in med school. I hope you guys like that video. I hope you guys like that we're in a car. Can't believe you guys are asking for more car videos because I just set up a $20,000 uh, studio in my house. Yet, you want me to do iPhone videos in my car. I'm kidding, I like these videos too. I hope you guys like them. If you like the video, like the video. Subscribe and share these videos if you think it'll help somebody else. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.